Okay, stand by in three, two. So I know that you're out here quite often, um, but how does it feel today to be out here? It's of course unsettling. It's, a, it's unsettling because it does involve Indigenous women. We have more to do to address safety across this community. Today, we're asking for your help. We're very sensitive to the whole missing and murdered Indigenous women investigation and inquiry. We need to do more. It's disheartening to still have to be here and, you know, that these women are still not retrieved and given proper peace and closure. We're sisters, we're cousins, we're daughters, we're aunties, we're mothers. We are not trash! We are not trash! I should not have to stand here today, and I should not have to come here and be so mad and beg and beg so that you will find and bring our loved ones home. This doesn't affect just one family, it affects an entire community and an entire nation at that. the Winnipeg Police released information relative to the arrest of Jeremy Skibicki in relation to the murder of 24-year-old Rebecca Contwa. I'm absolutely heartbroken and utterly shocked at what is happening to our people and what is happening is an ongoing genocide time and time again. Today I'm here to publicly report three additional murders Jeremy Skibicki has been charged with. Morgan Beatrice Harris, Mercedes Myron, and a female that we have yet to identify. If you want to respect and honor them, stop making excuses as to why you can't find them. The police are trying to cover themselves because they know that they fail our woman time and time again, and it needs to stop. Winnipeg, Manitoba, a cold prairie city with a unique charm, but for many, it's known to have a dark underbelly. It's a city in crisis. While making up just 6% of the city's population, Indigenous women accounted for 20% of last year's murders. Mothers, daughters, and sisters like Morgan Harris. It's sad that they end up in spots like that, but the most you can do is try to save them, right? And in this case, there, there was no saving for four women who were taken, and it's not just one family that's affected, it's a community. Cambria Harris is still coming to terms with the pain over the loss of her mother. Within the last year, the 21-year-old has become a leading voice for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in the city. Morgan Harris is one of four Indigenous women Winnipeg police believe were killed by Jeremy Skibicki. My mom was Morgan Harris, and she was a great person, and I want her to be remembered as how she was when she was younger and not how she was when she went missing. And I think it's sad that time and time again that we have to keep coming here to gather for sad circumstances like this when our family members go missing and it shouldn't have to be that way. This doesn't happen to just my mother, but it happens to Indigenous women all across Canada. And Winnipeg just happens to be the epicenter of where missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls 
occurs. But this is a problem across all of Canada and this shouldn't just be an Indigenous people's problem, this should be an everybody's problem. Cambria comes from a long line of strong Indigenous women. Many of them are victims of Canada's residential school and child welfare systems. Intergenerational trauma that was passed down. I was apprehended at the age of six and CFS has the power to split siblings up. So my younger sister Janelle and my little brother Seth got to stay while my sister Kira and I got ripped away in care. And so in care we bounced around for years while still having visits with my mother and my mother was she was always there as long as she could be but she she was really greatly failed and when you lose your children to the system you lose you lose everything you lose yourself and you lose your home and you lose your mind and so she really struggled with mental health issues in the last years of her life over the years, she watched her struggles with addiction, mental health issues, and homelessness. And I always wondered where my mom was growing up. Every time it got cold, every time it rained, I prayed that she had somewhere safe and somewhere warm to go. Because in the back of my mind, I always had that fear that she was gonna go missing or murdered. Because I knew she was vulnerable and I knew that my mom was at risk. It angers me because my mom was she was such a strong, resilient woman who really tried her hardest to survive, and she absolutely loved her kids with everything she had. We begin with disturbing details out of Winnipeg tonight, where police revealed more information about an investigation dating back to May of this year. On May 16, 2022, the partial remains of 24-year-old Rebecca Contois were found in this garbage bin near an apartment building in the 200 block of Edison Avenue. 35-year-old Jeremy Anthony Michael Skibicki was charged with first-degree murder days later. The grisly details of the crime shocked the community. In December, Skibicki was charged with three additional counts of first-degree murder. It's unsettling because it, it does involve Indigenous women. We're very sensitive to the whole missing and murdered Indigenous women uh, investigation and inquiry and the recommendations that come out of that. This is top of mind for us. It's something that we work with our partners uh, to try to prevent this kind of stuff, doing a lot of outreach work with many of the community support agencies out there so that it doesn't come to this. The identified victims were Morgan Beatrice Harris, 39, and Mercedes Myron, 26. Myron was the mother of two children. Both women lived in Winnipeg and were members of the Long Plain First Nation. Very few details have been released regarding the third woman. Except for this image of a jacket police believe belonged to her. Community members began calling her Buffalo Woman until she can be identified. Today, we're asking for your help. We're calling on everyone, including the media, to help us identify this female. It doesn't matter how trivial you may think your information may be, give us a chance. Give us a chance to follow it up, because the last thing that we want is for this fourth victim to remain a Jane Doe. It's not acceptable. Through the investigation, police discovered more remains of Rebecca Contois at the Brady Road landfill in Winnipeg. And they now believe that Morgan Harris, Mercedes Myron, and Buffalo Woman's remains are at the Prairie Green landfill just north of the city. I was really confused because it, it doesn't take a genius to put things together and when they sat my family and I down to tell my mother that she was a victim of a homicide I had, I had many questions. And then to hear that it was a serial killer at that and other women were taken as well was absolutely mind-boggling and gut-wrenching to know that one of them was still unidentified. And then being told that they're not going to search was, that was just absolutely despicable and that's, that's violence. While operations at the landfills paused temporarily, the decision was made not to conduct a thorough search for the missing women. 
something police said would be too difficult given the amount of time that had passed. In the days that followed, Cambria and her younger sister Kira traveled to Parliament. They met with the Prime Minister and implored leaders to search the landfills for the missing women. Time and time again, our Indigenous women and brothers and sisters have to come here and we have to shout and we have to raise our voices begging for change and begging for justice for our people. And that is wrong. I should not have to stand here today and I should not have to come here and be so mad and beg and beg so that you will find and bring our loved ones home. April 3rd, 2023. The remains of 33-year-old Linda Beardy are discovered by staff at the Brady Road landfill. Beardy was a member of Lake St. Martin First Nation, but grew up in Winnipeg. Police ruled out any connection to the other murders and announced that the death was not being considered a homicide after finding video surveillance that showed Beardy climbing into a garbage bin hours before it was taken to the landfill. We are not trash! We are not trash! We are not trash! We are not This is what injustice looks like on the streets of Winnipeg today. And it's a scene that's become increasingly common over the years. Family members, victims, survivors, all brought together to honor the lives of their loved ones and seeking justice for the missing and murdered. That is the future! You start taking us more seriously so we don't have to gather here again because the next time it'll be worse. No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace. Morgan is a permanent blockade set up at the Brady landfill and it's been here since December 18th and it's in honor of my mother Morgan Harris who was murdered by the serial killer back in December as well as three other women and this is also a tribute to all MMI WG2S and anyone else who has been lost to this tragedy. For the last five months Cambria Harris along with community members and supporters have been calling on government officials the city, and the police to search the landfills for their loved ones. Camp Morgan was set up to honor the victims and help raise awareness for the missing and murdered. So I know that you're out here quite often, um, but how does it feel today to be out here? It's disheartening to still have to be here four months later, over a hundred days, and you know, that these women are still not retrieved and given proper peace and closure, so it's just, it's sad every time I come here and it's very, very, it's very spiritual and very grounding and it definitely, it definitely brings you down a little bit, for sure. The Brady Road landfill is where the partial remains of Rebecca Contois and more recently, Linda Beardy were both discovered. While the First Nations Indigenous warriors are the ones holding it down and attending this sacred fire, they can't 24-7. And so we have community members from all over northern communities to come down and show support and just pay respects to our women. Police now believe that the remains of Morgan Harris, Mercedes Myron, and Buffalo Woman are at the Prairie Green landfill north of the city. This past February, the federal government committed $500,000 for a feasibility study to search the Prairie Green landfill. There is a renewed hope the study will deem the search and recovery efforts feasible. We need action now to keep people alive. This is tragic. It is so violent. Uh, and we need urgent and immediate help 
to make sure that no other family has to deal with the grief of losing a loved one. Leah Gazan is the NDP MP for Winnipeg Centre. She has seen the devastating impact the recent murders have had on her community. You know, we are part of families who are loved, we're family members, we're sisters, we're cousins, we're daughters, we're aunties, we're mothers. Uh, we deserve to be safe. That's not happening in this country. And the normalization of genocide against Indigenous women and the kind of violence we're witnessing now, especially in Winnipeg, where we're finding women uh, being found in landfill sites, speaks to the normalization of genocide. We are not garbage. We are precious and our lives are valuable. Gazan was one of the driving forces behind the recent gathering at Parliament Hill, calling on the federal government to take action to end violence against Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people. What we're discussing today once again is the ongoing genocide against Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people. This is a nonpartisan issue. This is a human rights issue. This is a life and death issue. We have had a national inquiry that was released in 2015 with a failure to act. Families deserve justice. Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people and their families deserve justice. And this government needs to act now to ensure that we, we get the justice that we so deserve. The decision by the city and the police not to close the landfills and conduct proper searches when the discovery were first made have left many unanswered questions for the families of the victims. We have more to do to address safety across this community. Right now there are far too many people experiencing homelessness, addiction and poverty and that puts them into vulnerable positions. And there's too much violent crime. There's far too many homicides, this marks 50 homicides, a record, and that's unacceptable. I know for the chief and for the service, I, I know it's unacceptable to them. They've expressed as much. As mayor, as a citizen, uh, I, I cannot accept that. And as a city, we must not accept that. We need to do more. But given all that's happened in the city over the last few months, it's easy to see why the community is still on edge. Obviously, like I support them going out and finding our families, but I doubt it's going to happen because it's the city. They're obviously, they're white, we're native, and they just, they don't give a sh about us. They don't. Sometimes I'm scared because you never know what happens out here. It's the city, anything happens. Are you guys hungry? No? We have some chili and sandwiches. Okay. okay thank you, yes, okay, you're welcome. Care. Two, two more. The city of Winnipeg has the highest rate of violent crime across the prairies. Homelessness, poverty, addiction, underlying social issues that Jennifer Chartran has lived and witnessed firsthand. Mama Bear Clan is. We walk around the community, Point Douglas and Main Street to uh, we give away like food, clothing, the like hygiene, stuff like that and in the winter time we give like blankets, winter jackets, like winter gear and boots. Whatever we can get like get donated we'll give out right and um, we're there to keep the people safe. You're welcome. Have a good day. Chartran is a captain with Winnipeg's Mama Bear Clan. She says it's important that Indigenous women have a familiar face to turn to. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll put my arm out. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. When I was vulnerable at one point in my life, I felt like nobody cared about me and I know that feeling so I don't want to let others feel like that you know when I'm here when they can talk to me whenever they want I'll listen yeah <laughs>
<laughs> wow, I knew a few of them that were from shelter that were that were murdered. Yeah, I crossed across paths with a lot of them, yeah. What about the other girls? Did you know any Like other? Morgan and them? Yeah, I knew Morgan, yeah. I was so shocked because I seen her all the time at 190 and Meishi Project. Melissa too, I knew her from my my past life. And when I changed my life around, I always crossed paths with her at shelter too. And you know, it just breaks your heart. You think that they're in shelter and then they leave and they just don't come back. Neither the Winnipeg Police Service nor the mayor's office agreed to speak with APTN for this story. The study for the Prairie Green landfill wrapped up in May and concluded that the search is feasible. The plan could take up to three years and cost as much as $184 million. If the decision is made to move forward, there is already talk that the Brady Road landfill could be next. When I see my community gather like this, I see strength in numbers, but it's always for the same heartbreaking situation. And we as a society and we as a community need to do better for our women and our men. Time and time again, the only thing we see is these statistics released that only rise, but no further steps on how to prevent it from rising or how to implement change and so that's why we're here today is to you know call on the government and practically plea for justice for all of these families who don't have answers for their loved ones. It's not only the systems that are failing our women but also society how do you even and where do you even start, right? And so I guess the question is, we start with ourselves and we start with our community and we start protecting each other. And I ask that other people start protecting us as well. Mm -hmm.